Friends, I'm going to request you to kindly keep your phones on silent. If you kindly honor the person right here and the family, there is no urgent phone call you have to take or even respond to. Please keep your phones on silent and don't take calls for the next 45 minutes to an hour. If you could do that in the next few moments, I'd be most obliged. Friends, this is the first order of service I had to prepare with a heavy heart. Uh, in times past, uh, we have conducted so many funerals right here in Circular Road. But Shikadi was so special and uh, my heart broke. I hope uh, I am able to maintain my composer for the rest of the service. Uh, good to have you, uh, Arupesh, but not in very uh, pleasant circumstances. We're glad you arrived safe this morning. Trust the family as well. Friends, death reminds us that we all live in a fallen world and none of us can escape death. But yet, despite the hurts, we also have hope. And the hope today is given in God's word. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to mention about Shikadi that she has achieved success who's lived well, laughed often and loved much, who has enjoyed the trust of pure women, the respect of intelligent men and the love of little children, who has filled the niche and accomplished her task, who has left the world better than she found it, whether by a perfect poem or a rescued soul, who has never lacked appreciation of the earth's beauty or failed to express it. She has always looked for the best in others and given the best she had, whose life was an inspiration, whose memory a benediction. And this reminds me of a beautiful psalm, Psalm 46, which I would also often read uh, with Shikadi when I visited her home. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. Friends, even as we enter into God's presence, shall we all rise up and sing the beautiful hymn, one of uh, Shikadi's favorites, How Great Thou Art. Shall we stand? Good afternoon. What I'm going to read out is a tribute which one of her ex-students from US has sent me. He had met her when she was the headmistress in AG Purulia in 1984. And this is what he has sent me. I was a student of the Assembly of God Church School Purulia, West Bengal, India. And it was here that I first encountered her in 1984. For the past 38 years, she has been a source of inspiration and guidance to me. A story unfolds. It is a story of a remarkable headmistress, a passionate student, and a bond that transcended time and distance. It is a story that celebrates the life and legacy of Mrs. Raichaudhri, a name etched in the archives of education, and me whose life was forever changed by her presence. Last evening, a heavy shroud of grief descended upon me as the news of the headmistress's sudden and tragic demise due to a severe heart attack sent shock waves through the corridors she once graced with her wisdom and warmth. For me, Mrs. Raichaudhri was more than just a headmistress. She was a guiding light that illuminated the path of my life and career. Little did I know 
that this encounter would shape my destiny in ways I could never have imagined. Recalling those informative years, I fondly remember her as my history teacher when I was in class 8. She was not just a teacher, but a mentor who saw potential in every student and nurtured it with care and dedication. It was under her watchful eye that I began to bloom academically, but it was her unwavering support and belief in me that ignited the spark of ambition within my heart. I always recollect her as a woman of great strength and resolve. She was a formidable leader who inspired her students to reach their full potential. She was also a gifted teacher who taught her students to think independently and to challenge themselves. She pushed them to achieve their goals and never gave up on them. No matter how difficult the situation, she was a passionate educator who believed in the power of education and its ability to change lives. She believed in me when I doubted myself. Her words of encouragement were like fuel for my dreams. I got an opportunity to meet my beloved headmistress in Kolkata. The re reunion was a testament to the enduring bond. I worshipped her as my mother. As I bid farewell to this lady, I am sending my wishes for her soul to stay in peaceful rest. I also extend my thoughts and prayers to her family, hoping that they find the strength to overcome this heart-wrenching loss. Her passing is a great loss for the school and for all who knew her. I am deeply saddened by her passing, but I will always remember her for the positive impact she had on my life. Her memory will continue to inspire. Her lessons will forever echo in the minds of her students and her legacy will shine as a beacon of hope and guidance for generations to come. I have a poem here which is dedicated to my sister Mrs. Shikha Rai Choudhury, my Chodhi. If tears could build a stairway and memories were a lane, I would walk right up to heaven and bring you back again. No farewell words were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it and only God knows why. My heart still aches in sadness and secret tears still flow. What it meant to lose you, no one will ever know. But now I know you want us to mourn for you no more, to remember all the happy times life still has in store. Since you'll never be forgotten, I pledge to you today, a hallowed place within my heart is where you'll always stay. This is a poem she sent me this year, February. And she told me, you will read this at my funeral. I said, I jokingly said, what if I go before you? She said, okay, then I'll read it for you. So it's dedicated to her. You know what's uh, my grandmother? And she was one of the strongest figures of our family. And losing her with one of the biggest losses, the Roger Bully and other who were also had. And she really missed her long time of her life. Thank you, sir. Friends, if there are two things I could take away from the life of Shikavi. I'm sure you'll agree with me when she had uh, two very strong qualities that stood out. 
One is she was fearless. Uh, she had no fear. And uh, the second thing is she stood for something she believed in. The two qualities I strongly identify with myself in my own life. Now the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Peter, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Which means uh, if the devil is walking about whom he will finish, there are also some people he cannot devour. So the purpose of the devil's roar is to frighten you. And that's one quality she didn't have. She didn't have fear. She was very bold. Your choice in life is to respond with either fear or to face it. You can never control what life throws at you. Never. See, life is so short. We spend most of our times complaining, fighting, grumbling. Your choice is to how, how to decide your response to what life throws at you. You can never decide the Goliaths that will come. You cannot say, I'm going to choose you know, lung cancer. I'm going to choose uh, liver cancer. You, you don't have a choice. Your Goliaths and giants will come, but you can choose how to respond. And she responded with a lot of guts, I must say. Oh, lots of courage, lots of courage. So whenever the devil roars, it's to frighten you. You choose how you will respond. You've got to run or you've got to face it. That's your choice. Totally your choice. Always remember uh, who you are and who you belong to. Of course, all of us are human and time to time we can get uh, afraid of things. Uh, there is a difference between being concerned and uh, being intimidated. In recent times, she was very disturbed and some of us were. And she kept telling the same thing time and again. Uh, Son, I'm really concerned. I said, Shikadi, you have my words. I will settle this. But after you come back from the hospital, finish your surgery. I think she was in a hurry to get the answer from God. So she went to meet her maker. Probably to ask why the delay. But I gave her my word and I will settle things. There is a difference between being concerned, being intimidated. A difference between being cautious and being negative. 9-11 no, in 2001, 22 years ago. What they really did was, they were not interested in bringing down brick and mortar. That wasn't the interest. The interest was to put fear. If I can bring down your power and your arrogance, I will substitute it with fear. For those of you who visit the US, observe how paranoid the Americans are. How absolutely paranoid. They very, every small thing over there, as everyone's out to finish them. I was uh, traveling in, in a certain country in Africa. In a bus from the, the exit gate to the aircraft, the, a bus takes you. It's a two-minute ride, right? Everybody travels by bus to the aircraft. So all, all of us from different nationalities, I'm the only brown person there, people from all over the world. You can definitely make out an American when you see them. So the Americans, ladies around Shikadi's age, and people from a specific part of the world, you can see their garments and make out. Suddenly, the bus is on the way to the flight. We're standing there. I'm, I'm observing everyone. Suddenly, the bus stops. Two security get in, take out these people from that particular part of the world, gets them out. Bus proceeds. Silent. I saw these American women trembling with fear. I said, ma'am, relax. It's not 9-11. Everyone's not out to finish you. But if you look at our lives today, we live in so much fear. Open the news channels. All they talk about is fear, this fight there, that killing there, that murder there. All we're doing is fight. If you go to the hospital where Shikadi was these past few days, death, fear, death, fear, that's all. We're going to the graveyard now. Fear, death, memories. That's all we're surrounded with, fear. See, you have no choice to decide what life throws at you. You can decide how you respond. You're going to respond with fear or you're going to just respond with courage. And Shikati had that guts to respond. That, that's why I would always stay by her side. And she would tell me straight on my face. If something she didn't like, she would tell me. And I would like that because a uh, senior person, son, this doesn't look good on you. I would definitely take that feedback and try to change that. That's feedback that helps you grow. Uh, Job, the book of Job, every time there was a disaster, Someone to remind him that something is wrong and someone put the blame on him. You're suffering because of your fault. We don't always suffer because it's our fault. Psalm 23, the reading that was read to us, 
The Lord is my shepherd. Do you know the circumstances David was writing in? His son is out to kill him. Absalom. Son out to kill his father. And David is on the run. That's when he writes, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wait a minute. David, you killed a bear. You killed a lion. You killed Goliath in a few seconds. You've never lost a battle. Look at his CV, his resume, a brilliant resume. What do you fear your son? You can finish the guy in a few seconds. See, David believed strongly in certain values. He wouldn't bypass those. Saul made David's life a living hell. Miserable. Tried to kill him so many times. David never touched him. Never touched him. Because he believed he will not touch someone whom God has anointed. Stood by some things. Shikadi stood by what she believed in what was right. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I've always asked that question. David, why are you making us similar to sheep? Sheep are weak, sheep are meek, sheep cannot run. Sheep always need protection. At least if you said I was a deer, I could run. Give me a gun, give me something to fight. Sheep are the weakest creatures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? So when threat and fear intimidates me, I know who is my shepherd. And Shikadi knew so well who her shepherd was. During the last week, she kept telling, uh, I want this surgery to finish. I I am really not happy with this. I want to go home. She kept saying that. Right, ma'am? I told her, ma'am, it's just a surgery. Come on. Uh, take it. She said, no. I. She somehow had this uh, discomfort with physical pain. She had the guts to stand. Uh, she can stand and face a mob. Even as I close, uh, friends, may I remind you of these words in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Doesn't matter whatever you walk through. Don't let that walk through you. Have you ever asked that question? Why we have been the generation to face the world's worst disaster, COVID. Why did God choose us to face it? No matter how dark our paths are, no matter how dark, don't let that darkness walk through you. Shikati is in a place that is safe, safe in the arms of Jesus. The first question I'm going to ask her when I meet her, why do you leave so soon? Yes, why? I feel totally abandoned. But her life reminds me that we work so hard trying to fit in, forgetting that we were made to stand out. So for my life, may I say this, let your light shine and speak the truth. Even when your voice is trembling and shaking. Why? Because in the words of Oscar Wilde, he said, be yourself. Because everyone else is taken. Shall we bow our heads? Close in prayer for a moment. Father, thank you for a life lived well. A testimony that spoke more through her life than through her words. For the comfort that her presence brought. For words of beauty that came out from her mouth, words of compassion. Thank you also for her home, Amidda and her son, grandchildren, Arupesh's wife and the rest of the family far away. Thank you for beautiful children that she has brought forth, Father. We know when we look at such lovely children, it is a reflection of the beauty of their homes. And she has done right. She and Amidda have done well as parents. And they have passed on this legacy to their son and lovely grandchildren. We pray that this legacy would live long. And we would learn from this life that has touched ours. Boldness when fear stares us in the face. Courage to stand for the right thing. Courage to stand even when a crowd can oppose us. Thank you for these lessons we have learned from our life. Today we ask for comfort when words are not enough. And when we feel weak, when we feel we cannot take it and the cross is too heavy, remind us that your grace is sufficient for us because your strength is made perfect in weakness. We ask all this in Christ's precious name. Amen. Friends, I'm going to give you time if one or two of you would like to share a word. On Ashika, they feel free to come to the podium. Thank you all come. for coming today. I'm sure my mom's looking down and is very proud of uh, each one of you who could make it. Uh, it's very hard to uh, sum up someone's life in a few minutes, but I'll try my best. Uh, 
you know, uh, that thing which comes up, uh, the nice picture of her says uh, loving uh, grandmother, wife, uh, and uh, mother. Uh, I would like to add one more word like teacher. I think uh, a lot of uh, I see here students, teachers, you know, that was her favorite uh, hobby, teaching people. And uh, so I got a mother and a teacher, so it was very hard on me, but I think it, it turned out fine. So I think I, I just want to reflect that, that she was a teacher first and foremost, apart from having, being a mother, wife, and grandmother. Second is like, as I was uh, flying down here, you know, I came to know that she passed. So, uh, you know, I'm filled with emotions and I'm trying to think of, like, I just think of good memories. Uh, there's this one memory of uh, me, I was in class three and uh, it was sports day, you know, and you have these races where kids run with like spoons in their mouth and with a, a lime, I think it's a lime or a lemon in it. And they just run and, you know, whoever doesn't drop it and finishes the race wins it. I don't know how I came third, like the most unathletic person there, right? But I came third. And as I'm, I'm, I'm walking up to pick up the medal, right? I'm so happy. And I stare at the, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, like there's gonna be people standing up and everyone's gonna clap. And that's a three year, or like class three, I don't know how old I am, I'm expecting that. And I'm walking up and I see only one person standing and clapping. And it was my mom. That, that was like one memory I had I wanted to share. What I got from that today, being a father to two little kids is, she was always there, you know, as a parent, she was always there as a mother, a wife, teacher, she was always there. The other quality she had was she always found good in people. And I'll say this in Bengali because it makes more sense. I would be working and I'm calling my mom and she would be like, and I'm like, okay. Like the first time this guy has come to our house to fix a paka. And we'll say, ki ki bhalo, ki bhalo, ato bhalo, chele hai na, hey, she, and I'm like, and I'm getting jealous, right? I'm like, really? I'm being professional, like how we are nowadays, like, like we learn how to be professional. He's taking money from you. It's a transaction. So it's a professional transaction. You don't need to give him compliments. And he would say like, you don't see good in people. You have to see good in people. And I'm like, Tumi taka di chobole, he's good to you. But you know, she's, she kept on saying that. It's very hard and weird for me to understand that. But like, she always found good in people. So third thing that I, I think I, I, I want to highlight today is like, uh, she, she was very close to the church, uh, to God. Not just because she was a prayer warrior, she would pray, she was part of your lives, she was part of uh, a lot of people's lives. She was the rock for our family, a uh, lot of us. She was a rock for my dad, for me. I don't think I'm, I could stand here and speak a syllable or even stand before you without her blessings today. But the other day, my two-year-old kid was running and as he's running, he's singing in the house. So every day he wakes up, he goes, good morning, good morning. I never taught her. My mom, when she was in US, she would get up every day and say, good morning, good morning. And I think she, he just found that funny. And he now says it to every person we are walking on a hike or in the park or on the street. And it's like seven in the night. And he would just stare at that person and say, good morning. So I think she taught her grandkids. The other thing she he does a lot is like, he just sings hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Trust me, I never sang that, right? But she was there for three months and she figured out to teach a two-year-old. He can't say hallelujah, he says hallelujah. But he says that and he sings it And because my mom used to sing it with him and he sings it now. So like she, she for generations, she has made a difference in our life. Ma, wherever you are, as you are looking down on us. I want you to know that you have made us proud and you have left this world a better place. And I'm going to miss you so much till we meet again. Rest in peace. I request one student, if you could come and testify of your beautiful memories with Shikadi.
one of you would come forward, we'd like to hear from you and your story and memories with her. Come, Alex. Uh, I'm not prepared for this, but uh, just would like to say that uh, ma'am taught me history uh, when I was in class 10. And uh, I was very, you know, very un not very confident about my studies, but I was doing well. I was doing well in other, other subjects. And uh, ma'am, somehow she, you know, she knew that I would not do well in history. So she made it a point to challenge me when I was, you know, just about to give my uh, board exams. She said, I don't think you'll be able to do well with the kind of uh, effort that you're putting towards this subject. So I was like really shattered and I was like, you know, why didn't she encourage me? But then I realized that, you know, when I gave my board exam, I really prepared really, really well for this particular subject. I left the other subjects. I was not giving a lot of effort on the other subjects, but this was really important because I wanted to prove my point. And finally, I was able to uh, do really well and I give the entire credit to ma'am just for this particular, you know, challenge that she put forward toward me. But not only that, you know, uh, I'm, a I'm a member of this church. I come here uh, every Sunday and I see ma'am sitting right there and, uh, you know, worshipping the Lord and, you know, singing songs of praise. And when I met her, uh, you know, a few years back, she told me that she really enjoyed the songs and, you know, that we sung in this church and uh, she felt the presence of God. So that was really, really important for me. And it really touched me, you know, and she used to say that, oh, uh, you onek bhalo gaan karo, ye karo. And so she used to always praise me. Then I understood, you know, she is such a person that she will bring out the best in you. So this is what I wanted to share this uh, this uh, afternoon, this is how she impacted my life. Thank you. We'll finish this side first. So if you kindly come forward, when we start singing, you can all be seated as we sing because if you stand, you can't see the lyrics. So all remain seated. This entire right side comes out from here. Go around the circle and then go out there. Fine. Again. 